Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 24 of the chapter States of Matter. In this video, I'm going to introduce the next state of matter, that is the liquid state. In the past 23 videos, I told you about the gaseous state. We did the gas laws, we did the kinetic molecular theory of gases, and then we studied about ideal and real gases. Let us now come to the next state of matter, that is the liquid state. So let me introduce what liquids are once again. Not that you're not aware of the liquids, because we use, we handle liquids, solids and gases all the time. If we look at the molecular structures of solids, liquids and gases and see their packing, we find we've already studied gases in a lot of detail. And we did it in kinetic molecular theory of gases that the molecules, they are far apart and the volume that the molecules occupy is almost negligible and the intermolecular forces are very, very low. The density of gases is almost very low because since the volume that the molecules occupy is negligible, obviously the mass per unit volume would also be very low. The liquid state comes between the solid and the gases. The gaseous and the solid states are extremes. In gases, the molecules are far apart and in solids, they are tightly packed together. While in liquids, it's an intermediate between the two. They're not far apart. They are pretty close, but they are not so close that they can't move from their position. Now, in liquids, it is as if the molecules are touching each other, but there are spaces, a little bit of spaces, intermolecular spaces, so they can slip and slide from their positions. In solids, if you look at these guys, if you look at this one, it is being surrounded and touched by all the molecules around it. There are six molecules are touching it immediately and the, those six are being pushed by the others or rather are being touched by six others. So what happens, each molecule, it has it cannot move from its position. It may vibrate a little bit at its own position, but it cannot bodily move. That is, it cannot move as a body from one place to the other because there are no spaces there. So if you look at the liquid state, it falls between the two. So let us just study what are the characteristics of liquids, looking at this um, difference between liquids, gases, and solids. The first characteristic is that intermolecular forces in liquids are stronger than gases. If you remember, kinetic molecular theory of gases, which talks about ideal gases, assume that there are no intermolecular forces of attraction or repulsion. But these forces of attraction and repulsion are present in molecules if they come closer to each other. They do come into play. In the case of liquids, the molecules already are closer. So intermolecular forces of both attraction and repulsion would be stronger in the case of liquids because this depends on the proximity. How close are the molecules to each other? So intermolecular forces in the case of liquids are greater than the intermolecular forces of gases. Now we are comparing it to gases here because we've yet to study about solids and uh, we've studied all about the gases. So we'll be comparing it with gases right now. The molecules in a liquid are closer they have very little space between them, yet they are not so close, not as close as solids. So what, whatever little space they do have between them is enough for the molecules to be able to move from one position to the other. The next is that under normal conditions, liquids are more dense than gases because what is density? Density is mass per unit uh, volume. So if we, the mass here of gases would be per unit volume would be very less. But in the case of liquids, the mass per unit volume for the same compound would be more. And if that compound is present as a solid, the density would be still more. So we say that under normal conditions, the density of liquids is or liquids are more dense than gases and they are less dense than solids because the number of molecules per unit volume is the most in solids, lesser in liquids and the least in gases. So obviously their density also falls in between them. Then molecules are held together by intermolecular forces of attraction. The intermolecular forces of attraction hold the molecules together. But we also know one more thing. 
that you cannot, you cannot compress liquids much. Why can you not compress liquids much? Because not only do they have intermolecular forces of attraction, when they come too close, the intermolecular forces of repulsion also come into play. So after a certain distance, you cannot smoosh the molecules further together. There comes an extent where beyond which they do not come closer to each other. So liquids cannot be compressed because not only they are held together by intermolecular forces of attraction, but intermolecular forces of repulsion make them almost not compressible, non-compressible or very little compressibility they show. So they are held together by intermolecular forces. Now, they have a fixed volume. If you see, if you take a liquid in a, uh, like I've taken water in this bottle, it has a surface. You can see the line where the water is present. So liquids, they have a surface. And they have a surface because they have a fixed volume. If it was a gas, this space would not have been empty and the molecules would have occupied the entire bottle. But since it's a liquid and intermolecular forces of attraction are strong enough to hold the molecules at one place, we find that it has a surface and it has a fixed volume. they have a fixed volume and molecules can slip and slide you see they can move the molecules can move and constantly as they move the shape of the liquid changes it acquires the shape of the container if I pour this water into another uh, jar it will acquire the shape of that container whatever I poured it in so it says that they have a fixed volume and the molecules can slip therefore they can flow water we've seen liquids they have the uh, property of flowing they have this characteristic that they can flow and they assume the shape of the container so these were the characteristic properties of uh, liquids so this was just a brief introduction to the liquid state in the next video i'm going to tell you about vapor pressure and then in subsequent videos we'll be doing surface tension and viscosity if you found this one helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning again and again for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.